So welcome back guys. Today is uh, probably going to be the main honey harvest for the year, I would think. If you remember a few weeks ago, we got into the hives and uh, we pulled off, uh, I guess, a preliminary honey harvest, if you want to call it that. And we ended up getting about 60 pounds, which is really not a whole heck of a lot. Um, but a lot of it was a lot of it was last fall's honey and last summer's honey. Right now, I'm hoping to go into these hives and find spring honey, which is my favorite. It's very light, uh, it's very, very sweet, and uh, it's just got a great flavor to it. So that's what I'm trying to find today. That's what I'm hoping to find today. And uh, if I can get the smoker lit, and that, that's what we're gonna be looking for. So I do have my generator again today and we are gonna be using that blower that we used last time. Uh, that was just an extremely efficient way to get the bees out of these supers. And uh, that's what we're gonna be doing again today. It worked really well. Uh, also, if we're successful in this harvest and it turns out pretty good, stick around and I might do some kind of a honey giveaway to one of you guys. So yeah, let's, um, let's get started here. So before we do that, I would like to go ahead and open up these um, packages that we installed and go ahead and get the queen cage out. It has been uh, three weeks, I suppose, at this point, and I have not retrieved the queen cages from these hives, which is uh, not like not really a serious thing. It's just you know, a housekeeping thing that I should probably deal with. So let's um, check on these packages real quick. There's four of them, and then we will get to the honey. So of course we want to make sure that the queen is in good shape and laying. So the thing about these packages is that you really need to be aware that you're going to lose population. Yeah, okay, we're, we're, we're doing good here. We've got, that's actually a lot of drone brood right there, which is somewhat concerning. Let's look for, uh, let's look for some worker brood real quick. There she is. Hope y'all can see her. There's our queen right there. So obviously she's out and she's actually laying an egg currently, but the problem is I see a lot of drones in here, a lot of drone brood, and uh, that's, that's kind of worrisome. So I went into one of the other boxes, one of the other packages that we just installed, and I found, uh, this is what I found. This is what it's supposed to look like. That little void right there is where the queen cage was. This is what it's supposed to look like. See all the worker brood? And you've got hatched worker brood right here. So what we have here is very mature worker brood. We can actually see bees currently actively hatching out right in this area. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap a frame. I'm going to put this frame in this box and one of these frames from this box in the other. I'm afraid we've got a queen in here that she's not a dedicated drone layer because there is some worker brood in here. There's just a lot of drones. So either she'll get the hang of it and start laying workers or uh, she'll have to be replaced, one of the two. But I'm going to go ahead and put this in here so that the population won't uh, dwindle to a uh, to a critical to a uh, to a critical uh, number, critically low number. So we'll take this one, put it in the other box, and uh, go from there. Oh, there's our queen. Let's get our queen to make sure she make sure she stays in here. Well, she is a sneaky little thing. There we go. You go back in there. All right. So we'll put this frame in here so their population won't be uh, so low. And uh, we'll move on. All right, let's check this one out. This is one of the boxes that my son helped me do the frames in. Helped me mark the frames. I think he did a good job. There's no denying whose bees these are. All right, this box is looking really good too. There we go. So there's where the queen cage was, that void there in the middle. That's not a big deal at all. But you can see we've got lots and lots of good, solid worker brood. If you compare this or contrast this to the one we just looked at with all the drone brood, uh, you see what she's supposed to be doing. And this is what she's supposed to be doing right here. So looking great. This box is doing good too. So that's two 
out of three so far. I hope that number four is good too. And there's really no need for me to dig and dig and find the queen because I can see evidence that she's in there. Um, so no need to harass them more than you have to. All right, this one will be our very last one before we do the honey harvest. And you can see our queen cage right here. It's really best to take these queen cages out uh, within a few days, but uh, it really doesn't hurt anything to leave them in except it makes your comb a little bit weird. Um, oh yeah, this is wonderful. This is exactly what you want to see. That is absolutely beautiful. We've got nectar or sugar syrup or whatever that is in the top there, probably both. We've got pollen stores in the top. And we've got lots and lots of good looking worker brood. So this box, as far as I can tell, is in really good shape. So that's three out of four. And what we'll do is we'll just keep a check. I actually might put one of these frames in that other box too, just so their population doesn't go uh, really, really bad. And uh, anyway, so this is a really good sign. We've got three out of four boxes doing good. I'll have to keep a check on that other one. And uh, hopefully, Hopefully that queen will get the hang of it. If she doesn't, she'll have to go undergo the hive tool test. All right, I'm gonna swap these frames real quick and then we'll get to the honey. All right, so let's go ahead and do what we came for here. Um, so what I just showed y'all, checking those uh, packages, is a really good example of why it's important if you're considering getting into beekeeping, not to start out with just one single hive. If you start out with one single hive, there are a couple of problems with that. Number one, you don't really know what hives are supposed to look like. You can't compare any of the hives. Number two, if you have a problem, you don't have any other resources to help fix the hive that's not doing very well. So at least two hives, the hive and the honeybee, the book recommends starting with three hives. And that's probably better because you saw that I just added two frames to that box that's not doing well and I would not have felt good taking two frames out of one good box but I felt okay taking one frame out of two good boxes separately so anyway if you're thinking about getting into beekeeping please 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 don't get one hive get at least two and three is probably better all right, so this is a box that we extracted uh, two and a half weeks ago, I suppose. And there is tons and tons of nectar in there. Very, very heavy, but uh, it's not capped. So we're gonna move on and see what we can find deeper into, into the box. Yeah, so lots and lots of nectar. Lots and lots of nectar, but not yet extractable. Man, yeah, we're, we're into the brood nest. Whoops, where am I? We're into the brood nest here, so. Golly, I was uh, hoping for good things from this box. Let's move on. So there are some individual frames in here that looks like I will be able to take. So I'm just gonna get a spare box and put a few individual frames in there and uh, that'll allow me to extract a little bit more. All right, so let's move on to this one. I ended up getting five frames out of that particular box, which uh, is not too bad. Didn't think I was gonna get any, so <laughs> works out. So on just about every honey harvesting video, I have people ask, uh, do you use queen excluders? Why aren't you using queen excluders? Um, you know, questions along those lines. I don't use queen excluders, and uh, the reason is it's just something else to keep up with and most of the time uh, of course what we just saw ooh, that's not looking good what we just saw was kind of the exception and uh, this box was extracted a couple weeks ago that's why it's not looking so good but uh, the box we just looked at was kind of the exception but the reason that i don't use queen excluders is because the bees just naturally put the honey up in the top of their boxes and once they get a uh, honey band, I believe it's called, once they get a box that's full of honey together, the queen is really not going to go past it to lay eggs because there's no place for her to lay eggs. And it's really just an extra piece of equipment for me to keep up with, and therefore I don't fool with it. So, obviously not looking so hot here either. Let's uh, check the next box. And to my knowledge, I can't say definitively, but to my knowledge, I have never killed a queen by not using excluders. 
And some people actually call them honey excluders because sometimes the workers are not willing to go past it. And of course that um, prevents you from getting the, as much honey as you can get. Now, as far as them being honey excluders, I do not know if that is true. I have just, I've read it. So, I mean, you know, who knows, but I've also read that queen excluders can uh, contribute to accelerated wear and tear on bees wings. So instead of, you know, so it makes their wings more raggedy and they don't live as long and they're not as useful for as long. I don't know if that's true either, but mainly I just don't use them because they're extra equipment and I don't think they're totally necessary. So we're going to move on from this box. Not looking like we're going to get any honey from this one. And guys, I'm starting to wonder if I have fallen victim to my own impatience here. I wonder if I uh, could have waited another few weeks to do this. So this one was also harvested a few weeks ago. And we do see quite a bit of nectar in these cells, but nothing harvestable. Let's check the next box. So you can see we've got three frames in the middle here that are new. And it appears that they are not building these out at all. I don't know if that is because, no, there's plenty of wax on there. It looks, feels really good. I don't know, they're just not building that out for some reason. What they do have a tendency to do is if you put an empty frame like that next to a frame that already has comb drawn out, they'll just continue to draw out the frame that's next to it and we can see that that has happened here. There's lots and lots of nectar in there, but look how far they have drawn that out past, uh, past kind of the limits of the frame there. So they'll just keep drawing it out farther than you really want it. Not that that's a big deal. It's not really a huge deal. It's just, you know, can be kind of a hassle if you're trying to get your frames just right. So, yeah, let's check the next next box here. Well, the good news is we got a good queen in there. The bad news is we don't have a lot of honey in there. So guys, I just went back and I checked my notes and Last year, on May the 1st, we harvested 50 pounds of honey. And then on May the 19th, we harvested 125 pounds of honey. So, uh, I'm not entirely sure what's going on. I'm not sure if I just hadn't gotten to the honey yet. I don't know. Maybe the nectar is not as good this year. The flow is not coming in as strong. Because I've got the strongest hives I have ever had as far as population and health go. Um, that's been pretty good. I'm hoping I just hadn't gotten there. I know this box has got some in it though. Uh, it's possible that I had unrealistic expectations. That happens to me a lot, <laughs> actually. Oh yeah. All right. So we're gonna be able to get this one. You see that? This whole box is exactly like this. So yeah, we're going in the right direction here. Let's check the next one. Oh yeah, this one can go also. This one can go too. That's great. All right, let's check this one. Um, this box here, you can tell that it's a deep hive. And uh, I pulled it off of another hive that was kind of a, a underperforming or a weak box. And I put it on this one to use it as a honey super. Uh, doesn't look like they're doing a whole lot with it, unfortunately. And I think the reason is I had a hive that swarmed not too long ago and I think I'm not sure 100%, but it's possible that it was this one. And if it was this one, that is, uh, of course, the population is going to be much lower in this box. Yeah, they're, they're putting nectar in it, but I don't think they've got the population right now to do it. Let's see what else is going on in this box. I'm pretty certain that this is the box that swarmed because the population in this box is just not good in fact i'm going to dig on down deeper 
to make sure they have got a queen. They have successfully replaced the queen because I'm actually worried about this population. They got a lot of honey, it appears, but they just don't have a population worth mentioning. I'm seeing some very old brood, but no fresh eggs. Let me uh, cut the camera off and dig down into this box a little more. All right, guys, so I got down into the next box and I don't really, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get y'all to see that, but there are eggs in here. So uh, yeah, silver lining, we've got eggs. So there's a queen in here and she's doing her job. So uh, that's, a, that's a good thing. So if I remember correctly, that box that we just looked at was actually started from a swarm. So they've kind of got swarmy genetics anyway. So I don't guess I should be surprised that they swarmed. It's pretty evident that these bees have swarmed also and I just didn't know about it. Man, tough, <laughs> tough break. All right, guys, so now, of course, is the really fun part. It's getting the prize, getting the honey, right? So that's what we're gonna do. So if you notice the difference in the color here between this and the honey that we gathered a couple weeks ago, the honey from a couple weeks ago, a lot of that was actually last year's honey. And the difference is between the flowers that they're gathering it from has nothing to do with the bees. It's just the flowers. So this right here, it's probably a lot of blackberry nectar in here, probably some privet nectar as well. I'm not sure what else, quite honestly, just uh, probably a lot of clover. Um, and it just produces a much lighter honey than what you see later on in the year.
So that's going to do it for the very first box there. And I've already started on this second box and I can't be 100% certain that the honey in this box is the same as the honey in that box. That box over there is a very nice early spring honey that I like so much. This is a little bit darker. It tastes pretty much the same, but it's a little bit darker. So what I'm going to do is wait until this honey drains out of this filter here and our screen rather and i'm going to swap buckets just to make sure i can keep this honey isolated from the next so that uh, i can keep them keep them separate and if they are exactly the same or close enough then i'll mix them up later but i just really want to make sure that i don't mix up the dark and the light honey together I don't think I ever extract honey or I don't think I ever cut cappings off of these frames without thinking about this. A few years ago I made a, this is hilarious, I made a video and it was one of the honey harvest videos. I don't remember what year it was, but I was using this knife and I had a, well, I had a close up of me cutting the cappings off of these frames and I was having a little bit of trouble just like you see me having pretty frequently. And uh, I published it anyway, and you know, it was fine. And several months later, maybe, I don't really remember how long later, it was quite some time later, I was on Facebook and I was just kind of mindlessly scrolling through. And I saw this advertisement for a honey uncapping device. And you know how a lot of infomercials, you, you get somebody that's really clumsy and doesn't know what they're doing, and then they say, hey, here's the, here's the device to fix all of your problems. Well, I got to looking at the scene where they were uncapping the frames and having a lot of difficulty. And I said, that looks really familiar. What is that? And I finally figured out that they had ripped my portion of that, well, that portion of my video off and use it in their infomercial. So they ripped off an awkward part of my video and used it to show how their device could fix that problem. It was some kind of a honey uncapping device. Um, I don't even remember what it was, but I, I discovered it and I'm like, man, <laughs> so that was pretty rough. But I mean, there's really not a whole lot you can do about that kind of stuff. That's just the, I think that's just the nature of YouTube and how it goes. So that's going to do it for our main uh, portion of the honey harvesting, I guess you could say. Uh, what I'm going to do now, I don't have a capping spinner, so what I'm going to do, I've got my cappings in here. I'm going to dump them right in this little contraption. This is just a plastic bucket with a hole in the bottom on top of my screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop these in here, let these drain out. And while that's happening, I'm going to take my um, boxes and go up and put them back on the hives. Um, I have discovered uh, during this extraction process that there are a lot of things that I can improve upon. And when I get back, we're going to talk about that. And also, I mentioned earlier that we may do a honey giveaway with some of this honey. And I think that we will. So stick around and I will tell you how to get entered for that.
All right, guys, so we got the hives. The box is back on the hives, except for these two frames over here that I accidentally left in the extractor. We'll get those tomorrow. This is still draining out. It's a pretty slow process, so we're going to let that go for a while. Ended up with 70 pounds of honey, and uh, that was kind of a big disappointment to me. And you know, I don't want to complain about 70 pounds of honey because it is just really remarkable that I can go out and keep bees and I can watch those bees go out and get nectar from flowers and so on and so forth and bring that nectar back and uh, dry it down into honey for them and then some extra for me. Uh, the Reverend Langstroth, the man that made the Langstroth beehive, the modern hives, he said that the Creator can be seen in all the works of his hands, but in none more clearly than in the wise economy of the honey bee. And he's absolutely correct. There is, There are very few places in nature where I see God's hand in uh, in nature, in creation, than in honeybees. It is just remarkable the way that they operate. You know, there is what happens outside the hives, bees flying to trees and flying back, big deal. The stuff that goes on inside the hive is just incredible. So I don't want to complain about this gift that I have been given of 70 pounds of honey, but I do think I can make improvements. So the things that I did right this year, this is my ninth year of beekeeping, by the way, and if anybody has some advice for me, please let me know, because I'm always learning. So the things that I did right this year, my mite loads were incredibly low coming into the spring, and uh, that contributed to a very healthy, strong spring buildup. I checked drone brood a few weeks ago, and I just, I think I found one mite on a bee, on a random bee, and none on like 40 or 50, I think it was about 40 pieces of drone brood. Just mite numbers were astronomically low. So I did good on that. I um, also did pretty good on getting them, to, I'm stimulating them to rear brood. I would uh, checker, not checkerboard, but I would uh, swap boxes, the bottom box, I would move to the top so that they wouldn't waste that bottom box. A lot of times bees have this tendency to not use the very bottom box in a hive. So if you take it and you move it to the top, uh, that stimulates them to use that box and they've got more space. Um, I had plenty of space for them for the honey but I think one of my main problems, I wonder if I'm extracting too frequently. I did that extraction earlier in the year and we got 60 pounds, which is pretty good for early extraction. And then we did this one. There's a lot of nectar still on the hives, but it's just not ready to be, uh, not ready to be extracted. So I think I probably could have waited this time, maybe even another couple weeks at least. So maybe I should just wait a little bit longer next time. Um, I think what I might start doing is taking the boxes, taking the supers off of the hives for the winter and storing them inside, getting the bees to clean them up really good and just putting them inside, storing them with some Paramoth because I'm having trouble at separating the honeys. I get a really light, a really light, nice honey in one box and in the next box I've got uh, some dark honey from last year. I don't want to mix those up. So I think what I need to start doing is just start with fresh empty boxes every season and go from there. So uh, I think that's probably my, the main two things that I could be doing to, uh, to improve my experience here. Something that was beyond my control was the fact that two of my really strong hives swarmed and once they swarmed they became hives that were just really not producing honey at all and that's normal, that's just what bees do sometimes. So that was beyond my control. I think I had unrealistic expectations and those never go well. So I am going to give away a bottle of honey or a jar of honey rather. It'll just be a pint jar and I will use the very light honey that is my favorite. and. I will get that jarred up and all you have to do to win that is to comment on this video. I'll put the comments in a randomizer and whoever wins I will comment on your comment with my email address. You can send me your information to that email address and I will ship that jar of honey to you. Um, if As long as it's in the continental United States, just the, the lower 48. Um, so yeah, I guess that's going to do it, guys. Thank y'all for watching. This has been a little bit different. We've done, uh, we've checked on the packages. We've extracted a little bit of honey, and uh, now we're doing a little giveaway. So lots of different things. Oh, the third thing I think I can improve on my extractor. It's a pretty good extractor. I think it needs the electric motor. I made a mistake by not getting the electric motor. Radial extractors are different than the one that I had been using. The one that I had been using really slung the honey out good. This one takes more time to get that honey out and it's kind of difficult to rotate. So I think I'm going to get that electric motor very, very soon, if not this year, definitely next year. 
and uh, I'll, then I'll be able to set it, set it and forget it, right? Then I'll be able to set it and do my other stuff over here while I, while it extracts. And it needs at least three minutes of spinning and my arm can't handle three minutes of spinning. So that's another improvement I think I can make. I, I noticed a lot of those boxes were still kind of weighty when I was putting them back and uh, there was a lot of honey left, which is not a good thing. So anyway, that's going to do it, guys. Thank you all for watching, and uh, make sure to comment on this video, and I will let you know if you win. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all on the next one.